Hello everyone, Jobin Blue here with the RPCS3 progress report for May 2017. In this video, I'm going to be showing you a selection of games that have either improved in terms of compatibility or performance. So I'll be showing you the games at the beginning and then towards the end it'll be more the technical kind of stuff. So as you guys can see in this first image here, we have the RPCS3 compatibility play wheel. 129 new games were tested. One important thing that they wanted to mention here was that KD11 has joined Nekotekana's Patreon. KD11 is like the lead graphics developer on RPCS3 right now. With KD joining this Patreon, he will be able to work more on RPCS3, so that way he can focus on like game specific bugs, Eventually, he'll be able to implement higher in-game resolutions. So if you guys want to see that kind of stuff faster, I would suggest that you donate to their Patreon. There is a link in the description below. He worked a lot with the Vulkan API, and the video that you're seeing right now is, is just a sample of the improvements that RPC S3 saw because of that. Now we have some images of Persona 5, and as you can see by the fourth image here, someone has actually beaten the game. They say it's kind of slow right now, and Bloom is broken, but there's going to be some performance improvements coming up soon and KD11 thinks that he should be able to fix the bloom soon. The way that they're going to be able to make this faster is by implementing a lib fiber. KD11 thinks that the issue with the broken bloom has to do with the PU instruction. They also want to point out that Red Dead Redemption as well as some other games also use this lib fiber as well as the PPU instructions so it's not like this is just going to be one game that gets affected. So it's not going to be the only game that's getting worked on by the RPCS3 developers right now. Here is a before and after image of the Vulcan improvements made by KD11 as you can see up in the top left corner it like it is almost doubled in speed. This very final image here is Persona 5 running at 60 FPS. This is true 60 FPS. This is not like Zelda the Breath of the Wild running at 60 FPS because in that case the speed is tied to the physics where in Breath of the Wild it would be going twice as fast. Here in Persona 5 it's native like actual 60 FPS. So if we were to ever see Persona 5 be released on the PlayStation 5, chances are that it would also be able to support 60 FPS. On to some other games. To start off with, we have AFL Live 2. It got a speed boost, but it's still pretty slow. Akimi Village got twice as fast with Vulcan improvements. They say it now makes it basically playable. Armageddon Riders got some performance and graphical improvements. Armored Core 4 Answer finally got past the main menu, but it still doesn't go in-game yet. The Atelier and Archonelico series are now playable and they run at like 30 FPS all the time. That is on a Intel Core i5. Batman Arkham Asylum now goes in game. It's still pretty slow though. If you're really interested in this game, I'm pretty sure that it runs good now in Simu. Of course, here is RPCS3's baby Catherine and it now runs at basically full speed. This image was taken with an i5-4690K. Cell Factor Psychokinetic Wars now goes in game but it's still pretty slow and it also crashes randomly. A member from the Discord was able to beat a Dark Souls boss. They're confused right now because it's the same engine as Demon Souls but for some reason it ultimately runs slower. Dead or Alive 5 Green, uh, I mean Ultimate, is obviously suffering from some issues right now. Even the RPCS3 team was laughing at this. Defenders of Ardania now runs twice as fast thanks to the Vulcan improvements. For Disgaea 4 and Disgaea D2, Nekotekana created a speed hack patch and now these games are able to run a lot faster. The Dragon Quest Builder's performance was doubled with Vulcan improvements. Eureka 7 AO Attack the Legend is now approximately twice as fast. Final Fantasy X now runs a little bit faster thanks to SPRX and Vulcan improvements, but they say that X2 doesn't really work at all. Folklore now shows a loading screen, which even they pointed out was like, oh, who really cares about just one little loading screen? But this game had involvement from the director of the Shin Megami Tensei series. He also worked on Persona 1 and 2. Guitar Hero 3 went from doing nothing at all to now being in-game, but of course it's still too slow. Initial D Extreme Stage is it now about 2-3 to three times faster thanks to Vulcan. Someone actually made a video of the game. Kanan Lynch used to be about 10 FPS but now it's about 27 so it saw significant performance improvement. The Lumines Supernova video was taken down but it is now flawlessly playable at full speed with Vulcan. Knit Underground is also another game that is flawlessly playable thanks to Vulcan. Mobile Suit Gundam Side Stories now goes in game and it's got some pretty good graphics. It's probably a bit slow for your taste though. The original Nier saw some slight performance and stability improvements thanks to Vulcan. 
Obviously, there are still some graphical issues. Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2 graphics are now pretty much flawless. Oddworld Munch's Odyssey is now playable at 30 FPS all the time with a good CPU and with some pretty good graphics, and this is thanks to Vulcan. Vulcan basically tripled the Poker Night 2 FPS. Race Driver Grid now goes in game. As you can see, it's squashed to the left hand side, but KD11 knows how to fix that. Rayman Legends is now playable at full speed with perfect graphics. Red Dead Redemption now renders pretty good with Vulcan, but it still crashes almost immediately. One user on the Discord was actually able to go in-game. This image has actually been edited because the in-game graphics are really blue right now. Resident Evil Revelations now runs pretty good, and they say it's probably pretty comparable to an actual PS3. Thanks to some SPRX loading improvements, Resonance of Fate is now able to go into the main menu. Scott Pilgrim vs. The World is now completely playable at full speed, and this is like super important because the game was actually recently delisted from the Xbox and PlayStation stores. This way, RPCS3 will be able to preserve this game forever. Sengoku Vasara 4 is now playable. Silent Hill Homecoming is now basically full speed thanks to Vulcan. Tales of Symphonia and Exilia saw some performance improvements this month. Exilia has some broken text at places so it's not considered playable yet. Thanks to some SPRX improvements, Shadow of the Colossus now goes in game. Unfortunately the graphics are broken and it still crashes pretty fast. Topa Toy is now approximately 3 times faster but its graphics are still pretty bad. As for Linux, it seems that they got Vulkan to work on it correctly, and it's now very compatible as compared to like Windows version. They said that they're going to be able to start providing app images. There's a complete commits log in the description down below, but here are the ones that they thought were like pretty important. So as you guys know, KD11 was the one that was responsible for all of the Vulkan improvements. He was also responsible for the RSX fixes, which is why Disgaea 3 is now playable. Negotechna was responsible for fixing the broken sound in Dragon's Crown. He also made it so that games like Little Big Planet now properly will install their game data. He also cleaned up a lot of code and helped to improve logging, as well as prepare things for the LibFiber improvements. I'll talk about that a little later. Jarvison was responsible for substantial improvements to DualShock 4 support. RPCS3 is now able to use calibration data from the controller or the gyro. It also helped to provide some fixes for Bluetooth and it also helped to decrease latency. That same PR also helped to improve that same PR also helped to improve the breaking save data that was being experienced in Persona 5. He was also the one that helped to fix Scott Pilgrim which also helped to make Epic Mickey 2, SingStar, and a few other games boot. Shameful was the guy that beat Persona 5 at the slower speed, mind you it's a 100 hour game. They started experiencing some issues right before the final boss and were almost able to beat the game. Luckily enough to fix that crash they only needed to fix one typo. Lastly Raven02 was able to get Tony Hawk Pro Ground in game. So that'll wrap it up for this report. Make sure that you guys check out their Patreon, their YouTube, their Discord, everything so that you can help to stay up to date with big news. They're actually working on a new thing called LibFiber, which is supposed to make a lot of games faster, such as Persona 5. I think it's going to drop sometime this week, if not today, so I'll definitely be making a video on that whenever it comes out. Shout out to Triple S Shadow for making this report, and I will see you guys in the next video.